Hello, this is Techman88, and I've got here an industrial turtle farm, or scute farm. So the way this works, I think, is kind of clever. Um, the large turtles are able to walk over this gap, and then the small turtles, which hatch from these eggs here, and they're going to walk over, and they're just going to fall into this pit right here. And the way all this happens is because of the pathfinding of the turtles. So if you have this too high water uh, area here, the bottom one can just be falling water. Um, like everything is going to go towards this area. Even if there's like one high water around here, like in a swamp, um, they're going to prefer, they're going to think this is the ocean here with the too high. So yeah, the uh, small turtles, they fell down into this gap and they need to sit there for a full Minecraft day. And there's going to be a lot of them down there. And that's also why there's vines down here that prevents the entity, collid entity collision code from running. So the player would just sit here in this minecart, and I can go into survival mode just to show that this works. So yeah, he just sits here with the seagrass, and yeah, this is like a lot of the other turtle egg farms or skewed farms. Compared to the other skewed farms that I've seen, this is a whole lot easier to build. Because it's all repeating, you don't need like every other block to be uh, different. This is, just has a huge sand area, which is what you need. You need a lot of sand blocks for these eggs to be on to make this an efficient farm. So this is far easier and far more compact than everything I've seen before. So now I'm just running a 24,000 tick test, which is a full day cycle. And I'm starting at the time where the turtles hatch. And you can see that there's still turtles dying while the turtles are hatching. And that's over like a minute period is pretty much when all the eggs have a possibility to hatch. Um, so yeah, you want to be careful that the entity count doesn't get too high while the turtles down there are still alive and the turtles walking toward it are still are just being born. Uh, yeah, so you wouldn't want to make this, this uh, farm insanely big because you can really slow down your server for that period of the day. And on the eggs hatching, about 20% hatch every night, just in a steady state scenario. I did some testing on this, and I guess you can just trust me that my testing was accurate. So a bit more on just the, the way I exploited the water behavior. So I found it is about 16 block range where it will track these, uh, these water. And as I said before, you only really need a one high one, but I found that the two high ones are a lot more reliable. Um, so this is one, two, three, oops, let me start that over. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, so that's, uh, this is sixteen away, roughly. And I've just got these command blocks up here to summon some turtles, some baby turtles. And you can see that the ones here, they can really easily track the water. They all just basically leave at the same time, but past this point, I guess this is uh, the 16th block away. He doesn't want to move over. Maybe if I just scoot him over, like past that middle point. Yeah, looks like he's seeking it now. So yeah, that's about how wide you want to make this. So for uh, setting up the turtles, what you would want to do in like survival is you would want to place the turtle eggs. And then you would want to build glass around it, kind of like that. And you would just basically wait for that to hatch, which takes a very, very long time. But that makes it so that these guys will completely grow up. They'll st spend their baby life inside this little cage here. And their home position, which is like their home beach, will be set to inside there. Um, so that's how you do that part. You would probably space them, put some like here, 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 something like that. And they try, uh, when they're laying in eggs, they seem to go to that home position that they have it set in their entity data. Uh, they go there, then they might go around like eight blocks around it and look for some free sand to lay the egg in. I'm not totally sure how that works. But yeah, here's another cycle going. Kind of funny. These guys make funny sounds. But in creative, of course, you don't need to bother with any of that. You just uh, just spawn them, use the spawn eggs to put them in there. And if you just want to build this from the video and get dimensions, so it's uh, the rail here, then uh, you want the too high water space here. 
After two blocks, then you want just a glass block there, trapdoor, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen blocks of sand right there. So before I show the rest of it, I wanted to show my own survival build right here. So I built it in a swamp biome, which uh, it was kind of a good decision, I would say, because it's nice and flat. Uh, there was something I had to consider, which was there were sort of two high water areas back here behind the farm, and those were attracting the turtles over. So I just filled in a bunch of dirt right there, and I built it like this, kind of like incomplete on both sides. And if you saw my last video, it was about a vine farm, so uh, why not just use a bunch of vines everywhere? <laughs> Yeah, I got so many vines now, I can just freely use these vine blocks everywhere. And so down here, this is the item recycling system. And I'll explain this later, but yeah, the items basically come in... Oh, got down here. Um, yeah, the items come in this way. This will be the seagrass as well as the scutes. The scutes end up over here. Got a whole bunch of them already, plus a bunch of shulkers. Um, yeah, the seagrass comes in here. This is like a buffer and gets dispensed up this way. Into this bubble column. And that just comes over and sits on this hopper underneath this minecart. So I think this turned out to be a pretty cool build. And I like the way that I just have this item recycling system integrated. You can definitely make this off to the side somewhere, but I wanted a challenge of making it nice and flush like this. So back in creative, I finished building it out. I added some light sources to keep like zombies and stuff from spawning up here. It's 48 blocks wide, uh, 14 blocks deep on the sand part. And I also added this, uh, this seagrass recycling system. So the player would be in the minecart, and when he goes over this, he would pick up the stack and then after a short delay, there's this repeater down there, uh, which like this observer reads off this rail through a note block. And that's going to depower this hopper just briefly so it pulls out the entire stack. It can do that even with when there's a lot of items. That's just how they work. They pick up entire stacks. Uh, and in the same time, it's going to be dispensing a new set of seagrass that'll just land here. And I'm just using a glass pane to align it like in the middle of that hopper. So go down to look at the observer down here. There's the note block right there. You could use basically any redstone powered block, like a uh, glowstone or something. And then there's just a repeater of four. And then that gets fed into this little fader clock here, additionally. And that's going to power this dropper down here, which shoots out this, the sea pickles. And the sea pickles, they come in from here. This is just a standard sorter arrangement with a big chest here to hold the extra ones. This might fill up completely, but you'll probably never have to deal with that. Um, and then also, I just have another block there. I mean, another button right here. And I've turned it off just to show why. So when you leave this farm, you probably don't want some just sitting around there. So this is just going to let it pull out those items and refilter them down. Sort them out again. And then the scutes would come down here into this area. So I liked this because I thought you could use like slabs and just make this look really nice. So you can just decorate this area pretty easily, I think. Looks, looks good like that. Which I think is a good thing in any farm, as I've probably said before. It's nice to have it look really good, especially for a farm like this, which is almost more for, for show than for anything else. But yeah, it just would look like that. I think it looks, looks great. If you are interested in making a more server-side efficient farm, uh, this is one that I got started and kind of gave up on because I thought it was pointless. But basically, on a farm like this, you would be able to feed these baby turtles the sea pickles. And I had to do a whole lot of work to figure out a bunch of blocks and positions that would work for this. So I actually used a path block, the baby turtles. They have a very tiny hitbox. I think one of the tiniest hitboxes, or at least shortest hitboxes there are in the game. 
And then, uh, yeah, I have a minecart down here, which in this part it would be pushed by water. And I've just got it stopped by a piece of glass. And now if I press T, I can look at this number here. It's negative 15.2. That is the uh, vertical angle. And then what would happen is I would be running along here and just feeding these seagrass. And I can, in fact, reach it. Yeah, you can see the stars there. And part of the reason I'm moving so slowly is because you need to feed them a ton of seagrass. I'm not sure that, why that didn't finish. But yeah, then uh, eventually it would finish, and the minecart would come up here. And that same angle is where you would be feeding the, uh, the sea turtles, so about negative 15 degrees. So I might be able to move myself along and show that he gets the hearts on him, yeah. So that was a big challenge to find a bunch of configurations. I needed to have the exact same angle. Uh, basically, I started down here because this has such a specific angle, the path block with the full block uh, next to it, catty corner to it. And then up here, they have to be on a slab. And then the trapdoor here is short enough that the adult turtles can't get through. And I use the same thing where the baby turtles fall down here. But as I said earlier, this is probably a pointless thing to do because the design I showed earlier is way excessive and this would just be even more ex excessive if you can get it to work. So just running this farm like you would actually be AFKing in it. And I've got the, uh, I've got the turtles highlighted by some command blocks. It just checks their uh, is, has egg in the NBT tags. And if, if so, it just sets their, uh, gives them the glowing effect. So yeah, they're going to come over, lay their eggs, and I will speed it up if I can. Still pretty slow. I've just got so many entities around here. Uh, 150. Going to plant, uh, plant their eggs in the ground, then come back to the feeding area. I guess you could call it the big feeding trough run by the player. So before I finish up, I just wanted to show a really cool sort of command you can do in 1.13 that I think would be very challenging in 1.12, which is this command right here that I'm using where I can basically simulate the player giving them the seagrass to make them in love. And I put that into a book here so you can see the whole thing. It executes at the, uh, at the minecart, like at the position of the minecart. Then it runs another execute command with this big selector here, so type turtle age zero, that means the adult turtles. In love zero, so they're uh, not, they don't have the seagrass thing, then has egg zero. Um, so you can do all that and it pretty much exactly simulates a player uh, clicking on them. And it just uses the distance of four, less than four to, to select them. Then it just does the data merge entity command in love 600, which is what I estimate is what the player would, would give them. So now when I do that, it's going to start highlighting them. This is another command that I have running. It's over in that direction if you want to look at it. Um, yeah, it just detects whether it has an egg. There's this has egg tag in the NBT. And you can use that as an NTC selector in 1.13. And I hope this isn't too boring or you're glazing your eyes over here. But yeah, just if you know this sort of stuff, then these farms can become very much easier to test in these versions of Minecraft, especially with Carpet and Tick Warp. So anyway, I think that covers about everything about this farm. Uh, there's not been a lot of work on these sort of farms, the turtle farms, because I think that the scutes have limited value. And I think part of the reason for that is because the potions that they can make the uh, the Turtle Master potions, they can actually reduce 80% of the damage you get, which is really, really great. But the potion system is just so bad in Minecraft. I think you should be able to stack potions instead of like having to finagle them around in your inventory, throw out the... Well, you know. You know how they are. So I think if, uh, if Minecraft wants to make itself a little bit better, they should like have stackable potions. Just make that make that a little bit easier to use, or a lot more easy to use, then the potions will become relevant, I think. Because right now, they're hardly relevant, except for, like, uh, the fire-resist potion. 
and occasionally like flashy potions, whatever. But anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.